Dear students, welcome to the fifth class on circles of 10th standard mathematics. In the last class, we have derived a result regarding two intersecting chords. There the intersection takes place at a point inside the circle. Now, today, we will start with the same intersecting chords, but one condition is there. There, one chord will be a diameter and the other chord will be a perpendicular chord to that diameter. We will get a result. We will apply that result in some constructions such as drawing square with the area equal to a rectangle, square with the area equal to a triangle, or a line of irrational length like that. And so, let us first go back to the last discussed intersecting chords. See, here two chords AB and CD intersect at the point P. We know the product of the pieces of the chords are equal mean PA into PB equal to PC into PD. Here we are fixing some conditions such that one chord will be a diameter and the other chord will be a perpendicular chord to that diameter. That means one chord is a diameter. This one is a diameter. And the other chord is perpendicular to that diameter. That means the angle between them is 90 degree. Let us name the diameter by AB and the chord by CD. They intersect at the point P. They meet at the point P. That means when the chord, when the diameter AB meet with a perpendicular chord CD at the point P, we have there also when two chords intersect at a point P inside the circle, the product of the pieces are equal. Mean here also PA into PB equal to PC into PD. That equation here also is there. Okay. Now AB is the diameter mean it passes through the center of the circle. Mean AB acts as the perpendicular drawn from the center to a chord. Therefore, it bisects the chord. The so perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord bisects the chord. In that way, PC and PD are equal then. Okay. Therefore, e in this equation, if we substitute PD by PC, it will be PC into PC then. Okay. PC into PC is PC square. That means, the product of the pieces of the diameter is equal to the square of half of the perpendicular drawn at that point of the diameter where it is divided into two pieces. That means when a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then product of the pieces of the diameter is equal to the square of half of the perpendicular drawn at that vertex where the diameter is divided into pieces. Here, this one is very important result we will apply in some constructions. Okay, if we have a rectangle with uh, these two pieces as its uh, dimensions at that time, the area of that rectangle will be the product of these two pieces. To get a square with the area equal to that one, we need to draw a square having this one as its one side. And so, let us have such a construction. See, here we are asked to draw a rectangle then a square of equal area. For this, let us first draw a rectangle with a scale and a compass or protractor, let us have it drawn. Then we need to draw a square having equal area to this one. For this, let us first extend its length outward. We will explain at last for what purpose it is. Along that extended line, let us mark the distance of breadth on that extender line. For this, keep compass here. Take this much distance in compass. Then cut by rotating the compass this extender line by an arc. We will get a point on that extender line. And we need to draw a semicircle here with this much length as its diameter. This much length, keeping this much length as the diameter, we have to draw a semicircle. And so the midpoint of that line will be the center of the circle. The midpoint of a line can be found by drawing perpendicular bisector of a line. Now here we want to get the midpoint of this much length. For this, we have to draw its perpendicular bisector. For this, keep compass here. Take more than half of this much distance. Draw two arcs at either side like that. See, arcs are drawn at either side of that line. 
now with the same distance in compass keeping compass here draw other two arcs to cut the initial two arcs now joining these two points that po that line will be the perpendicular bisector of this line now this one is the center of the circle now keep compass here take this much distance as the radius of the circle keep compass here take this much distance as the radius of the circle then draw the semicircle rotate the compass then we will get a semicircle keeping compass here take this much distance semicircle is drawn now we get this one as the diameter of that semicircle this one is a point on the semicircle here at this point we want to draw a perpendicular to that diameter for this we need only to extend this breadth to cut the circle because this breadth is already perpendicular with this diameter we need only to extend such a breadth and so when it is extended it will meet at a point on the circle now see this one is a diameter this one is a point on the diameter the product of these two pieces of the diameter gives the area of this rectangle mean that product will be equal to the square of this side mean if we could draw a square with this much length as its one side that square will have the same area as that of this rectangle now the only activity left is completing the square with this much length as its one side for this let us extend this side a, li a little bit so that uh, along that extended line let us mark this much distance for that uh, keep compass here take this much distance in compass then rotate compass to cut by an arc this extended line now with the same distance in compass keeping compass here draw an arc here we need to fix the fourth vertex of the square for that with the same distance in compass keeping compass here draw an arc then with the same distance in compass keeping compass here draw another arc to cut this arc now we go to the last vertex of the square now join these two points and these two points then all sides of this square is determined now the area of this rectangle let us shade that one initial rectangle it is shaded that area will be equal to the area of this much region that is the area of this square let us shade it okay this area this much area area of this rectangle will be equal to the area of this square let us explain how their areas are equal if we name the initial rectangle by a b c d its area is the product of its length into breadth mean it is the a b into b c see the area of this rectangle a b c d is a b into b c now this much length this length is equal to bc if we name this point by e let us tell the area of the rectangle abcd is now ab into be bc substituted by be ab into be is the product of two pieces of a diameter of the circle now we know it will be equal to that product will be equal to the square if we could draw a perpendicular here let us name this by f like that therefore that product will be equal to the square of that perpendicular mean this product will be equal to to bf square ab into be is equal to bf square bf square is the square of one side of this square okay if we name this square by g h we see area of square b f g h will be b f square therefore b f square represents area of square b f g h now we have proved area of rectangle a b c d is equal to area of square b f g h now we have understood the method how a square can be drawn with the area equal to a given rectangle and so you can write this question there and make all these constructions in your notebook as explained then 
how the area of this rectangle is equal to this square that should be explained with these steps in your notebook pause the video and write and draw and construct all these things in your notebook here we are asked three questions together the first question is to draw a line of length root 12 centimeter the second question to draw a square of area 12 centimeter square area of the square is 12 centimeter square mean its one side is root 12 and so if we get a line of length root 12 we can draw a square with that much length as its one side and so in that question also we have to use a line of length root 12 centimeter in the third question it is said area of the circle is 12 pi centimeter square area of a circle is pi r square pi r square is 12 pi when we cancel pi r square is equal to 12 then r square is equal to 12 therefore r is equal to square root of 12 r square is equal to 12 and r is equal to root 12 then c and so in all these three questions we need to get a line of length root 12 centimeter and so at first let us draw a line of length root 12 centimeter for that we have to think about the factors of 12 at first think about the factors of 12 now 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 are the factors of 12 see factors of 12 are 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 now we will take two convenient factors of 12 such that their product should be 12 for that let us have it 1 and 12 1 into 12 is 12 2 into 6 is also 12 3 into 4 is also 12 and so we will take any one pair from this which gives the product to 12 let us have it 3 and 4 okay if we take 3 and 4 we see 3 into 4 gives 12 no matter if we take 2 and 6 okay now to construct to draw a line of length root 12 at first we have to sum up this 4 and 3 so then the 4 plus 3 is equal to 7 centimeter we have to draw at first a line of length 7 centimeter then with that much length as diameter we have to draw a semicircle then we will draw a perpendicular to the diameter at a point where it is divided into 4 centimeter and 3 centimeter that perpendicular will have the length root 12 okay we will explain we can see it let us write the steps that here we are going to proceed see we will draw a line of length 4 plus 3 is equal to 7 centimeter then we will draw a semicircle with that much length as diameter then we will draw a perpendicular to diameter at a point where it is divided 4 centimeter and 3 centimeter okay if you needed to write the steps here we are going to proceed you can have it written in your notebook so that uh, you care you will get an idea how the construction is to be made and so let us have the construction at first we have to draw a line of length 7 centimeter with a scale let us draw a line of length from this point let us measure a 7 centimeter length for that keep scale there and measure 7 centimeter where 7 centimeter fall at that point put a dot then 7 centimeter draw the line there then mark a point where 4 centimeter where the it is divided into 4 centimeter and 3 centimeter there and that point is marked see now the line is drawn now we have it to draw a semicircle with this much length as the diameter that we need not to explain if this much length is to be the diameter of the circle we have to find out its midpoint for that we have to draw the perpendicular bisector that method here i am not explaining as it is already explained and so when such a perpendicular bisector is drawn we will get the center of the circle keeping compass there taking this much distance as the radius draw the semicircle see when such a semicircle is drawn it will be like that 
now we have to draw a perpendicular at this point this much length is 4 cm this one is 3 cm let us mark them 4 cm and 3 cm now if we could draw a perpendicular at this point to the diameter that perpendicular will have the length root 12 and so the thing with us is to draw a perpendicular to this diameter at this point for that let us have with you by protractor or by compass if you do it by compass keep compass here draw two arcs at both direction and so we will get such two arcs okay any convenient distance could be taken in com in compass keeping compass here draw two arcs one along this way and one along that way now keep compass at these two points again first at this point take a particular distance in compass okay then draw an arc there like that with the same distance in compass without making any change in the compass keep compass here draw an arc to cut the first arc now we will get a point there when two arcs intersected to that point we have to join from here see here these two distances are equal mean when these three vertices together considered it is an isosceles triangle this one will be the base then this one is the midpoint of the base line joining vertex and base will be perpendicular to base that is the principle here and so when we join this point and this we will get a line drawn perpendicular to a diameter okay and so that line has gone out of the circle and where that perpendicular meet the semicircle to that point we have to we need only to consider this much length as the perpendicular line or it is the length of root 12 centimeter see this much length that much length is the line of length root 12 centimeter this line is of length root 12 centimeter now we have drawn we have done the answer to the first question there it is asked to draw a line of length root 12 centimeter now <coughs> for the second question there you can pause the video and write down these much things in your notebook okay now to answer for the second question you have to redraw this figure the these things you need not to write again draw the figure again then with that much length as the this root tool as one side of the square if you draw a square with this much length in as one side of the square if the square is completed its area will be 12 centimeter square it's one side is root tool so the area of the square will be 12 centimeter square that method here i need n uh, here I am not telling you because as we have already explained how such a square is to be made for this we have to extend this one out and with this distance in compass we have to keep compass here cut that extender line with the same distance in compass two arcs one by keeping here and another by here you will get a point here and so when it is done all those activities you will get a, a square there and uh, such a square will be there that square will get an area 12 centimeter square you have to do all those activities in the second figure uh, here i have not done all those activities that i have done only the last step okay when such a square is constructed let us go to third question there it is asked to draw a circle of 12 pi centimeter square okay for that you you, you have to redraw this figure again now to that circle to get the area 12 pi centimeter square we have found its uh, radius is root 12 pi centimeter sorry root 12 centimeter for that uh, this one is of this much length can be taken as its radius so keeping compass here taking this much distance in compass you can draw the circle or keep compass here take this much distance in compass then draw the circle along that way okay let us keep compass here take this much distance in compass now if we start to rotate it will be a circle of radius root 12 centimeter therefore its area will be 12 pi centimeter square and so when such a circle is drawn it will be like that see this circle get its radius root 12 therefore its area will be pi r square mean pi into root 12 square is pi into 12 that is 12 pi centimeter square okay now we have done the answer to these three questions you have to draw these three figures 
as separate figures in your notebook okay now we have got an idea how a line of length which have irrational length can be drawn for, for an example you may, you may be if you are asked to draw a line of length root 15 centimeter what will be the steps first of all you have to think about the factors of 15 a two of convenient factors of 15 can be took it can be 3 and 5 you can draw a line of length at a first 3 plus 5 is equal to 8 centimeter then do all these activities as we have explained at that time you will get a line of length root 15 therefore you can draw a rectangle of area 15 centimeter square or a circle of radius 15 pi uh, circle of area 15 pi centimeter square like that here we are asked to draw a triangle then a square with equal area here dimensions of the triangle is not given but for exam you may be given a particular triangle mean its dimensions may be given at that time you have to draw accordingly but here nothing is told about its dimensions and so let us draw a triangle as we like let us name it by a b c we know area of any triangle is half b h where b is its one side and h is the perpendicular drawn to that side from the opposite vertex if we take b or the base by b c then the h is the perpendicular drawn from the vertex a to the side b c let us draw such a perpendicular from a to b c you know how to draw a perpendicular from a point to a line keep compass here at the vertex a take a particular distance in compass now you have to cut bc at two points see keep compass here at a and cut bc at two points by a single arc or by two arcs like that keep compass here take a particular distance in compass draw two arcs here to cut bc at two points see now here we get an isosceles triangle here these three points together determine an isosceles triangle this much length be the base of that isosceles triangle okay let us make one more isosceles triangle with the same base keep compass here take a particular distance in compass keeping compass here taking a particular distance in compass draw an arc here like that with the same distance in compass keeping compass here draw another arc to the to cut the first arc see here another isosceles triangle is made for both these isosceles triangle a common base is there therefore we know the perpendicular bisector of this line this much length has to pass through this one and through this point that mean the same line has to pass through these two points mean that perpendicular bisector is the line joining that two points mean when we join these two points that line will be the perpendicular bisector of this much base mean it is the perpendicular it is a perpendicular line to the side bc okay we have dropped a perpendicular from the vertex a to the side bc if we name that foot of the perpendicular by d now let us tell area of triangle abc is half of bc and ad let us write that one or bc into ad by 2 okay now the area of the tri triangle is half bc bc into ad multiply bc and ad then divide it by 2 instead of multiplying bc and ad and finding the half we can multiply bc by half of ad okay by the property of multiplication instead of finding the half of a product we can do it like this first of all find out the half of ad then multiply that one by bc or this one can be rewritten as bc into half of ad bc into ad by 2 
area of this triangle is BC into this much length should be multiplied by half of AD. Let us find out half of AD. How to find out half of AD? Ha, AD, see the length AD. To find out its half, we need only to draw a perpendicular bisector of the line AD. You know how it is to be done. Keep compass here at the vertex D. Take a particular distance, it should be more than half of this much length. Keep compass here, take a particular distance in compass, draw an arc here and here at two sides of that side AD. Draw two arcs like that. With the same distance in compass, keep compass here at the vertex A, draw another two arcs to cut the first two. Now join these two points, we will get the perpendicular bisector of AD. Now, where that perpendicular bisector meet the side AD, let us name it by E like that. Now, half of AD is now DE. Now, to tell BC into half of AD, let us write BC into DE like that. Half of AD is substituted by DE. See, now we can tell the area of this triangle ABC is the product of BC and DE. If we extend BC outwards, let us extend B, BC out. Along that extended line, let us mark this much distance DE from C. Okay, we will explain for what purpose it is. We know the area of this triangle is BC multiplied by this much distance. Now, this distance is marked from C along that extended line. For that, keep compass here at the vertex D. Take this much distance in compass. Keep compass here at the vertex C. Then draw an arc to cut that extended line. We will get a point there C. Now that point let us name it by F. Now see CF has the same length as DE because we have drawn like that. Now, to tell the area of the triangle is BC into DE, let us tell it like that, it is equal to BC into, instead of DE, let us substitute by CF, it will be BC into CF now, see, BC into CF, BC into CF. Now, if we consider a semicircle with BF as the diameter, if we draw a semicircle with the BF as diameter, at that time BC and CF are pieces of the diameters. Then the product of that pieces of the diameters, diameter is equal to the square of the perpendicular drawn at the vertex C. That means the product of these two pieces which represents the area of this triangle will be equal to the square of the side or the square of the perpendicular drawn at the vertex C. That means, if we could draw a perpendicular here, at that time, the area of the square with that perpendicular as its side, as that perpendicular, will have the same area as that of this triangle ABC. See, now let us draw a semicircle with BF as its diameter. Okay. We are going to draw a semicircle with BF as diameter. For that, we have to get the midpoint of the side BF. Midpoint of the side BF is to be found. For that, we need to draw perpendicular bisector of BF. You know how to draw perpendicular bisector of BF. Our aim is to draw a perpendicular, no, no, to draw a semicircle with BF as diameter. If BF is to be diameter, its midpoint should be the center of the circle. For that, draw a perpendicular bisector of BF. For that, keep compass here. Take more than half of this much distance in compass. Draw two arcs here at one side of that side, here also. Okay. When such two arcs are drawn, it will be like that. To both sides, we have drawn two arcs like that, one here and the other here. With the same distance in compass, keeping compass here at F, draw two R's to cut the other two R's first. See, now joining these two points, that line will be the perpendicular bisector of BF, mean 
we have got now the center of the circle this one is the center of the circle this one should be the radius of the circle therefore keep compass here take this much distance in compass start to rotate it will re that we will get a semicircle there see the semicircle is drawn now bf is its diameter bc and cf are two pieces of the diameter and so the product of that two pieces which represents the area of triangle ABC. The product of that two pieces will be equal to the square of the perpendicular drawn at the vertex C. And so if we draw a perpendicular at the vertex C, we have to draw a perpendicular at the vertex C. Okay. And now how a perpendicular is drawn at the vertex C? Here at the vertex C, we have to draw a perpendicular to BF. For that, keep compass here. Take a particular distance in compass, a small distance. Draw two arcs, one along this way and the other along this way. See. Keeping compass here, draw two arcs, one here and one along that way. Now, we are going to make an isosceles triangle. To that isosceles triangle, this much length is its base and this one is the midpoint of the base. And now the equal sides is to be drawn. For that, keep compass here. Keep compass there. Take a particular convenient distance, draw an arc. See, this with the same distance in compass, keeping compass here, draw another arc to cut this one. See, these two distances are equal. Now, this one is an isosceles triangle. See, this one is the midpoint of the base of an isosceles triangle. Line joining midpoint of the base and the vertex will be perpendicular to base. Okay. And so, we have to draw the perpendicular to the vertex C. Mean, we need only to draw from this point. We need only to join these two points. Okay. Now, let us extend that line to meet the circle. Let us keep the scale attached with the C and this point along that point extend it to meet the circle. See, when it is extended it will be like that. We will get a such a line. Now, we tell again, area of triangle ABC is the product of BC and CF mean it is the pieces of the diameter. Therefore, the product of that two pieces of diameter will be equal to the square of this perpendicular. Mean if we draw a square with this side, with this perpendicular length as its one side, this area will be its square. Mean that square will have the area as that of this triangle ABC. Now, the only activity left is draw a square with this length as its one side. If we know how it is to be done. For that, the other side should be drawn along this way. As this one is already perpendicular with this one, we can draw the other side of the square along this extended line. If it has not much length, extend again. Okay. And so, keep compass here. Take this much distance in compass. Then cut this one by an arc. Okay. Now, three vertices of the square is there. Now, we need to get the fourth one. Okay, now in the compass, this distance of one side is there. With the same distance in compass, without making any changes in the compass, keep compass here. Then draw an arc like that. With the same distance in compass, keep compass here, draw another arc to cut this one. You get the fourth point of the square. Join these two points and these two points to get the other two sides of the square. See. Now, we tell. Let us name this one by G. See. Now, BC into CF will be equal to, to CG square. That is a result that we have already formed. CG square represents area of this square. Let us name that square by H i like that therefore cg square represents area of the square c g h i let us write that one cg square is the area of square c g h i that mean 
this triangle triangle abc let us shade let us shade that triangle abc that triangle get area equal to the square c g h i c g h i let us shade these two shaded regions one is a square and other is a, one is a triangle and the other is a square okay we have proved or we have drawn a square with the area equal to, to a triangle and here it is explained how their areas become equal we have to write this question and make all these constructions in your notebook if it is needed if you require much more time post the video then view again write down all these steps how their areas are equal in your notebook read the question a textbook problem two chords ab and cd when extended meet at a point p outside the circle see we need to prove it first we need to prove all angles of triangle pac and pbd are equal on joining ac and bd we will get two triangles we have to prove their all angles are equal now the second part is we get an equation pa the full length pa into pb product of the full length with that part this is the first part pa into pb is equal to that product will be equal to pc into pd the full length with the part here that product will be equal as that of here also that is the second part now the third part in that product if pb and pd come equal at any time if they are equal at that time the quadrilateral abdc it is a cyclic quadrilateral that abdc is an isosceles trapezium then we have to prove so and so first let us redraw the figure the circle is drawn at first then two chords ab and cd when drawn and extended to meet at a point outside the circle p like that let us name the vertices a b c d and p like that okay now try we first we have to get uh, angles of triangle p a c equal to tri angles of triangle p b d for that let us join a c and b d so we get two triangles there see now if we suppose this angle by x if that angle is supposed as x we know one internal angle one interior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the angle at the opposite our uh, exterior angle at the opposite vertex that we have already proved if we suppose this one x we know this one also will be x for that here x mean abdc is a cyclic quadrilateral is a cyclic quadrilateral it's all vertices around a circle if this one x mean angle bdc this angle is will be 180 minus x that angle will be 180 minus x we know these two angles together linear pair if this one 180 minus x mean their sum should be 180 if this one take 180 minus x at that time to make the sum 180 this should be x okay that will be x then that angle will be x like that if we suppose this one by y like that this angle will be no need too much explanation this angle will be 180 minus y so that we agree this will be their sum should be 180 mean this should be y then then the sum will be 180 that on taking y their sum will be 180 what we get now is that when we suppose two angles of the larger triangle x by x and y the smaller triangle also get the same measure mean then their third angles are also equal or in other words the third angle is common that mean all angles of these two triangles are these two triangles are equal therefore the first part is over we see if we suppose the first larger triangle if we suppose two angles of the larger triangle by x and y the smaller triangle also get the same angles mean it's uh, all angles are equal and so the first part of the question is over now second time it is pa into pb equal to pc into pd pa 
the full length PA with the spot PB. PA into PB equal to PC into PD. Now we get these two triangles are equal. I, their angles are equal. And so we know if angles are equal mean they are similar. Mean one triangle will be the increased or enlarged form of the other. Okay. And so their sides should be proportional. Mean ratio of sides are equal. Triangle PAC and triangle PBD are similar mean. Let us write their ratio of sides are equal. Mean what ratio exists between PA and PC? PA and PC mean PA by PC. PA is the side against to Y by side against to X. PA by PC from the larger triangle. That ratio will be same as that of the corresponding ratio of the smaller triangle. Here we have to take the side against to Y as numerator. Therefore PD. Therefore it is PD by PB. PA by PC of the larger triangle will be equal to 2 PD by PC of the smaller triangle. That is mean by ratio of sides equal or sides are proportional. And so we get that an equation like that. If triangle similar mean the ratio of sides are equal mean we could write PA by PC equal to PD by PB. Now on cross multiplication here PA numerator and PB is the denominator of denominator of the second ratio therefore PA into PB equal to PC into PD we will get to that equation asked to prove that is to be proved therefore the second part is also over now the third part there is said PB and PD are equal if PB and PD are equal in this equation if we suppose PB and PD are equal let us cancel then therefore we come to agree PA and PC also are equal PA and PC are also equal in other words, PB and PD equal mean these two sides are equal mean at that time this one is an isosceles triangle we come to know these two angles x and y to are equal they mean these x and y are equal mean PA equal to PC and so by telling PB and PD are equal we come to agree PA equal to PC okay PA equal to PC mean AB and CD also are equal because PA and PC equal. Two full lengths are equal and PB and PD are equal and so the first parts or that two parts on that full lengths also are equal mean when we subtract that two equal pieces from that full lengths there the remaining should be equal as that two sides are equal when equal measures are subtracted from each one of them then the remaining should be equal therefore AB and CD are equal. Okay, PB and PD are equal tells us to agree AB and CD are equal. Moreover, we have to agree AC and BD are parallel because X and Y equal mean this X and Y also equal. This X and Y are the corresponding angles when two lines intersected cut by a transversal, cut by another line. At that time, these two angles are corresponding angles that two angles are equal mean AC and BD are e parallel. Therefore, we now get AB and CD equal and AC and BD parallel. Therefore, ABDC is, nice, is a cyclic quadrilateral. To that cyclic quadrilateral, we see it's one pair of opposite sides parallel. Therefore, it is a trapezium. And the other non-parallel sides are equal. Therefore, it is isosceles trapezium. Okay. And so, if you write that one, if PB equal to PD, equal we come to know PA and PC are equal and AC and BD are parallel and AB and CD are equal that much things are there then okay now AC and BD parallel mean it is trapezium and AB and CD equal mean it is isosceles trapezium that we are asked to prove you can write the now let us conclude the class the works in the page 67 question number one and five that we have already done question number two three four these three works are given you as homework you have to try yourself question number two three four do it as homework you know how it is to be done okay thanks